one more one more chapter of the book from Emmanuel, The Way, The Truth, and The Life. Tonight's chapter is chapter 16, Make Straight the Way. I'm Anna Moreno, and we will start with a brief prayer. Then I will talk for about 15, 20 minutes. Then we will all receive the virtual passes. Tonight, the meeting is in English. Uh, we have English meetings the first Wednesday of every month. You, even if you do not understand English, if you are not proficient in the language, you may rest assured that all the benefits are being received, not only for each one of us here uh, attending this session, but also to our family members and our houses. So in this moment, let's close our eyes. Let's connect with our guardian angel, with all the mentors that come every Wednesday to this meeting, inspiring us, supporting us in our needs, Let's forget our worries. Inhaling all the peace and love that surround us at this time. May each one of us encounter tonight what he, she, they are looking for. May each one of us be helped in our needs be sustained on the love of God and the promise of Jesus when he say that he will be here every time we ask. So in Jesus' name, we say amen. So this chapter from this book, it, it comes from uh, John chapter 1, verse 23. And it's a small verse that basically says, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah, John the Baptist. As we always see, Emmanuel takes just this small piece of text and develops in a full chapter, explaining in depth, in detail, what exactly the message is. So here is Emmanuel's comments. The appeal of the precursor, precursor continues to be present, inviting men and women of goodwill to the regeneration of their usual ways. And I think that this word regeneration is a pretty powerful one because he's not assuming we are perfect. He's already assuming that we have our own faults. All the time, we see people who come to the faith eager for what Christ has to offer. And I guess all of us who are here feel that way. We are coming for something. We have a need that is fulfilled by the presence, by our presence in meetings like this. They long for his peace. So we look for peace and divine presence, but sometimes they end up discouraged and defeated after their best sentiments give way to unjust anxiety. So even though we come through faith, we want to see Christ, we look for peace and for his presence. We misstep. We make a mistake, we get lost, and we somehow disconnect with his grandiosity, with this source of love. And then we ask, where is Jesus? Why hasn't he answered their continual pleas? In what, what distant realm so far from their sufferings does, he, does the master reside. They do not understand that Christ may be found every day 
right beside every true disciple in the kind messages, kindly messages of his love. They lack, they lack dedication to their own inner good. They run in pursuit of the divine master, heedless of John's counsel, make straight the way. To feel Christ's sanctifying influence, one must straighten the pathway on which one has been living. So we need to do our part. Many persons weep on the byways of wrongdoing. They mourn for themselves on the slippery slopes of continuous error. They call out to heaven, but continue to hang on the oppressing passions of the material realm. Under such circumstances, it is not appropriate for the soul to address the Savior who accepted humiliation and the cross without complaints of any kind. If you want Jesus to come and sanctify your activities, then make straight the ways of your life and regenerate your impulses. Get rid of the darkness that surrounds you and you will feel him beside you with his blessings. So, as always, Emmanuel comes with tough love. He doesn't let us play the victim role, really. Now, poor me, because I am suffering alone. You know, I have, you know, this family that doesn't understand me. Or this job and one boss after the other that makes me suffer. I pray every night, but it's not helping. I'm a good person. Sometimes I make mistakes, but I am a good person. Why am I suffering? Why, where is Jesus that doesn't save me? He said that he was going to save me. He basically comes and say, cut the crap. Mm -mm, that doesn't work like that. And we see this personality, this strong personality of Emmanuel talking to Sheikh Xavier many times. I remember Chico one day, he was really sick. And we need to remember that Chico Xavier, the one who psychographed this book, uh, The Way, The Truth and the Life. This is one of the books from the collection uh, uh, Living Spring. So there are um, five books. Chico used to work day and night. I mean, he had his job the job that would pay his bills, but you know, he would basically help people the rest of the time. And one day he was very tired and he was very sick. And then he was sitting at his uh, chair at his house and then Manu shows up and says, Chico, what are you doing? You need to go and work at the center. And Chico said, I'm too tired. I need a break, I can't, I'm too tired. And Emmanuel goes like, no, <laughs> you're not too tired to work. You're not too sick to work. You go now. So even with Chico Xavier, the one, the man who wrote more than 400 books, not even for him, he would say, oh, yes, you work so much. You need a break. No, you're like, no. You're going to receive everything you want in during the work. You do the work and the spirits will basically give you everything you need to feel good. You stay here reading the newspaper, not helpful for you. So how many times do we feel like that? That we're just too tired to help others. That we're just too tired to follow Jesus. That we're just, you know, um, too hung up from everything that is happening, all the problems that we have. And we try to basically cut shortcuts, find shortcuts in our life. Instead of going straight, said, mm, you know what? I'm just going to start at, you know, stop at that bar a little bit. 
instead of doing blah, blah, blah. You know what? I'm just going to watch a little bit of TV tonight. And then we turn on the news with all the horrible things that are happening around us. We forget when he's that when John says, make straight the way to Lord, he didn't say make the straight the word to Lord five days a week. And then the other days you can do whatever you want. No. As followers of Christ, as real Christians, that means leaving the truth. following the guidance every single day. So coming back to what Emmanuel said, I want to stop for a reflection. Why are we here? Why are you here tonight? Why? You could be showering, you could be having dinner, and maybe you are. You could be watching TV at the mall, working. But among everything, all the choices that you have in your life, you chose to be here. Why? What you're looking for? You're probably looking for some type of deliverable from tonight. You know from a past experience that you feel better, maybe. You're able to reflect about things. Maybe it's a break to a crazy day. And the third question that I have for each one of us is, have we thought about how we are living our lives? Because we are here now, maybe for 40 minutes, 30 minutes. That's 30 minutes during a week. How are we living? the other days. Are we finding what we want during the other hours? Do we know what we're looking for? And living with Jesus, finding a straight and path to God Meaning means to live a life with purpose. That means kind of a making our choices based on the end result that we're looking for. And Emmanuel kind of sets this paragraph saying, we long for his peace and divine presence. And I ask each one of you, including myself, do I want peace? Yes, I do. Would I like to have Jesus having dinner with me tonight? Oh my goodness. And then he continues. But sometimes after a bad sentiment, we give away to unjust anxiety, end up discouraged and defeated. So we want, we want something. We want to, be, to live in peace. We want to feel Jesus around us. But then we may step. We have a hiccup. And we disconnect from all these celestial beings that are here to help us. And we feel discouraged and defeated. Many, many times that anxiety starts to eat us inside and we forget to live the present and only start to worry about the future. 
forgetting that it is now that I have the control. It's today that I can make a change. It's through my will that I can choose the path to find what I am looking for. But with all the noise that we, we are emerged every day, it sometimes is very easy to get lost, to forget what's the purpose, what I'm looking for. I want peace, but I continue to fight. I want divine presence, but I don't find time to talk to Jesus or God. I live a life of a routine that starts at 6 a.m. and finishes at 11 p.m. and I don't, I barely have time to take a shower and breathe. I don't remember to take care of my body. I don't eat well. I don't exercise. I feel stressed all the time. So what I want is not what I am living every day. We are here tonight because we look for this inner peace, because we want to receive Jesus' blessings. And I can assure you that the moment that we silence all this noise that is around us, that we calm our minds, that's the moment that we can receive. Because these blessings, they surround us all the time. And that's a big secret that people think that many times I need to go to a temple, a church to receive these blessings. I need to talk to a priest, to someone from spiritism. No, I don't. These blessings are everywhere. The only thing I need is my willingness to connect and my action to do that. The second thing that he says is, are we doing what it takes to receive that? Just an example, coming back two years ago when we were all students at school, at high school, that we would complain about our grades, bad mouth about our teachers and say, oh, that's not fair. I didn't receive the grade that I was, that I, I deserved. Did I, did I deserve it? Did I deserve a better grade? Did I do all it took? Did I do all the best I could? Because at the moment that we ask for something, the first part we already talked about, which is we need to connect with Jesus. We need to empty our minds from all the noise we need to put our will in action, like what we are doing right now. But then the question is, do I deserve what I'm asking for? After I had fights during all the day, that I screamed, that I lied, that I gossiped, What is the quality of vibrations that I am bringing around me with my behavior? Am I really choosing the straight path or I only want the straight path during those 30 minutes every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m.? Because what we are talking about here, what he's talking about here is called inner reform. He talks about, he's talking about us modifying the way that we think, the way that we act, the way that we live, our habits. Because if we change the way we think, 
we will change our lives. It's on us. And time is the most pressure, precious treasure that we have. Time is something that everybody receives the same. No one can complain that one receives more than the other. But we all receive the same dose every single day. Nevertheless, we use time completely different. If we thought about the beginning of COVID, that we all thought that we would have more time to do lots of things. One year later, we realized that we were kind of running the same rat track that we were before. That the extra time that we had to walk our dogs, to have lunch and dinner with our family, suddenly it was invisible. How we couldn't find anymore. Is it because the number of hours in our day had changed? No, it's because we are not choosing the best way to use our time. So we all face challenges all the time. We have curveballs every day of things that can take us from our balance, our positive thinking, our optimism. Could be COVID, could be illnesses, could be a divorce, could be a loss of someone I love. I may be facing challenges at home with my spouse or my partner or my kids. I may lose my job. I don't know. We all face challenges. Everyone who is here on earth face challenges. I am not a privileged one. I'm not the only one who suffers. So when I ask Jesus, why me? The question should be, why not me? Because everybody suffers. So he's not saying, keep the straight path only when you're happy. Mm -mm, not saying that. And it's much easier to be nice when we are happy. It's much easier to think about others when everything is okay. But he's saying that when we keep the straight path, that's the way that we connect with Jesus. So it's when we are paying attention on our choices, that's when we are able to uh, continue to live our lives in a good way on the moral behaviors, that's the way that we connect with Jesus, despite what's going on. And a long time ago, I saw a picture. It was um, one of those pictures that was painted by a pigeon. That was amazing. The name of the picture was Peace. And it was a super big uh, waterfall that just by looking at it, you could listen to the sound of, you know, the breaking water on the rocks, really intense waterfall. But right behind the waterfall, there was a nest. So there was a waterfall, the rocks behind, between the water and the rocks. So on the rock, a bird was able to build a nest and had so a couple little birdies. So from people looking from outside, they would see all that avalanche of water, intensity of energy, that noise, and think, how can that be peace? Nevertheless, in that very little nest, Despite of all the water that was surrounded, all the potential danger that could kill the little birdies, there was peace. So our invitation from Jesus is for us to carry this peace. 
despite of all the noise, of all the challenges that we live every day. Remember to live a life with courage, with hope, with optimism. Do not give up. Do not give up because everything passes. How many challenges have each one of us overcome in the past decades? We are here. So there was not a single one that stopped us because we are here. So we need to remember that on the moment that we are suffering, that that shall pass again. Good moments pass. Difficult challenges pass too. So the invitation of tonight is for us not to dive into a pessimist behavior, disbelief. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus right now. You know, it's only about what I can see, what I can touch. Spiritual things, it's a waste of time. For 10 years, I was a spiritist and nothing helped. Carrying grief, anger, anxiety. That's like burning, a burning volcano inside of us that can destroy the best part of us and destroy the ones that are around us too. It may lead us to depression, to suicide, which we all know that's not the answer because life continues and the spirits, they come over and over again, reminding us that life continues and we continue to be who we are as we were when incarnated. We shall not take the wrong way, which seems to be easier, but that's a waste of time. Then Emmanuel continues, to feel Christ's sanctifying influence, one must is straightening the pathway on which one has been living. So it's about believing. It's about trusting that everything that we live today has a reason. It's a lesson. It's an opportunity of growth for each one of us that maybe the question is, what should I learn here? Is it patience? Is it toler tolerance? Is it compassion? Do I need to be more grateful? Instead of fighting with the situations, embracing them, feeding our days with this infinite love that surrounds us, that can give us the strength, the hope, the joy. So we can become better people. On the gospel, according to Spiritism, chapter 15, item 10, there is a block that talks about the description of the good man, what it means to be good man. What are the qualities of a good man? So if we do not know how to behave, how our actions should be, that's a good place to start. But I can tell us, tell you that it always starts with the inner reform. We all have our faults, as, as I was saying before. If we were perfect, we would not be here. Everything that we are living here is a consequence of actions that we had in the past, maybe this life, maybe a previous life. 
but there is one secret sauce that was given by St. Paul on the first letter to Corinthians, which is to love everyone, to do good to others. And to embed that in everything that we did, we do. We find Christ every day right beside every true disciple in the kindly messengers of his love. And we know that maybe it's a book, it's a word, it's a music, it's a conversation on the phone. Christ has, Christ has his disciples every, everywhere. We just need to have our ears open and ready to hear. Emmanuel continues, get rid of the darkness that surrounds you and you will feel him beside you with his blessings, with his hands, holding our hands, carrying us on the tough of moments that, that we live. But for that, to be able to see, we need to shine our inner light. So tonight for the Pasi, I invite each one of us to make a prayer. That's the prayer number 12 of the book, The Gospel According to Spiritism, which is the prayers for the one who prays that I thought that was a good combination for the chapter this week. That we all need prayer, that we are all going through a lot of stuff and we need help. So I invite you to close your eyes. And at this moment, we ask the benevolent spirits, messengers of God, whose mission is to help all humanity to encounter Jesus, the word goodness. We ask all of them to give us strength to suffer without complaining, to turn away from all evil thoughts, to do not allow each one of us to give access to any bad spirits who may try to induce us to evil. Dear Lord, Clarify each one of our consciences with respect. May we understand our defects and vices. Take away the veil of pride from our eyes, which can prevent us from seeing them and admitting them so we can correct them. Help us, God, to get away from the darkness, from this darkness that is inside each one of us. Dear God, allow me, allow the good spirits who accompany me to help me when I am in difficulty and uphold me when I falter. Lord, May they inspire me with faith, hope. May they be a point of support and inspiration and a testimony of your mercy. In short, may I always encounter in them the strength that I lack for the tests of life, the strength to resist all evil suggestions, the faith that saves and the love that consoles. My good guardian angel, never abandon me because I need all your protection to be able to support with faith and love the tests that God has sent to me. Amen. May all of us be blessed tonight with all the goodness, with all this light that is showering over us. 
May the people who live in our households benefit from the same blessings. May Jesus' light, peace, joy, compassion shine within our homes, giving us hope, giving us faith, giving us courage to continue to live a good life, to follow his steps, and to choose the straight path to our progress and growth. Dear good spirits, take care of us during this week. We ask for the blessings around the globe, for all the countries who are in war, for the leaders, for wisdom, for compassion, for love to one another. God protect our planet so fragile. Illuminate the minds of those who can decide and control the future of many. Amen.